Good evening. I'm Joe Dickerson. We are a financial research and judgment enforcement firm. Uh, our clients are national and international in scope. Our work does research to find hidden and diverted assets to satisfy judgments. Some of our clients come to us before they've been to court and win a judgment to determine if they in fact do win a judgment, will there be assets there from which they can collect to satisfy that judgment. We'll spend the next two hours going through the processes that we use at our firm. I would like for this to be interactive if possible, so if you have questions or thoughts, please raise your hand and share them with me, and we'll do the best we can to answer those. By way of background, <clears throat> I was a detective sergeant in Houston for about 11 years, worked mostly white-collar crime, and then my partner and I were selected by the chief of police and transferred to the district attorney's office along with his top five assistants. The seven of us formed the Organized Crime Bureau in Texas back in the early 70s when the mafia in Chicago and the one in New Orleans were fighting over who was going to take over Texas. And I did that until mid-70s, late-70s, and I left to devote full time to my off-duty work I had a company for 10 of the 11 years I was with the department doing security and crime prevention consulting work, mostly for the oil companies, majors, and independents, and working with the distributors and manufacturers of oil field equipment. After leaving the government, I formed the Oil and Gas Crime Prevention Bureau and did a lot of training for law enforcement officers and corporate security people and private sector on how to investigate both the blue-collar and the white-collar elements of the energy-related crimes. When the bottom dropped out of the oil market in the uh, mid-80s, within about 60 days I found myself with no clients, and the ones that I did have were hoping that their equipment would get stolen so they collect on their insurance, so we had to rethink our practice. That's when I le relocated to Denver, and the first client that I got of any real consequence was the legal department of FDIC. As many of you probably recall, a few of you are, have been around long enough to remember, in those days after the demise of the oil and gas industries in the early 80s, we went through a lot of bankruptcies around the United States. Many of those turned into bankruptcy fraud, and that was followed by what I call the FDIC RTC era, where the government and their agencies were taking over the failed financial institutions. What had happened in many cases was that bank officers in cahoots with their friends on the outside were actually embezzling a lot of these banks that were failing. A banker would say to his friend on the outside, hey John, why don't you come by the bank this afternoon, let me lend you about three million. I'd like for you to go down the street and buy Ajax Electrical that's for sale, and maybe you would consider hiring me as your chief financial officer because the bank's about to fail, I'm going to be looking for work. And yeah, just go ahead and sign there on the bottom line. While we're visiting, let me explain to you, don't worry about paying this loan back. So I was fortunate in that I was hired by the legal department of FDIC in Denver to be a consultant to them and help them recover their money. They would assign one of their in-house investigators and a paralegal or two on the staff of FDIC to work with me and my firm to augment my staff and allow us to work a lot more cases than we could have worked by ourselves. And we had the power of subpoena and discovery through the FDIC. And we recovered a lot of money in a lot of cases for a lot of banks or from banks that had failed with these scenarios. They call those officer and director liability cases. We also saved a few bankers from things that they had been accused of that they hadn't done. And I told them right up front when we were engaged, <clears throat> we're finders of facts. We're not here to hang bankers or to uh, perpetrate any vendetta of any kind. We'll find the facts, and then we'll follow the money. And it worked very, very well. And during that time, I assigned part of my staff to do some research, and we found out that 80% of the civil judgments in the United States are never collected. To the best of my knowledge, what we're doing in our continued research, that figure still holds true. Unfortunately, what most citizens think is that when you go to court, you present your case, 
if you win, the court's going to make them pay you. You've been damaged. You're entitled to recover $5 million plus cost plus interest and attorney's fees. What really happens is the attorneys present the facts. The court rules on the facts as presented in court and renders a verdict. So if you win, you get a piece of paper called a judgment that says, I won, I'm entitled to recover X amount of money. Have a nice day. And it's at that point that the citizens that are the victims of whatever may have happened, whether it was a Ponzi scheme, a fraud, or just a debt that wasn't paid, that's when they find out they're on their own to find their money and to recover it. Half the job has been done, in my opinion, the easy half, and that's presenting the facts. Then somebody has got to get the money back. Unfortunately, many of the attorneys that know full well how to litigate a case and win it do not necessarily have the skills that are necessary to enforce a judgment. Total different skill set. And a lot of that's not taught in the law schools. A lot of it comes through the school of hard knocks. So that's where we get involved. <clears throat> we go out, find the offshore bank account, the condo in the girlfriend's name, the Mercedes and the children's trust, all of the straw entities that have been set up to hide the assets. And once we get a pretty good idea of where those things are, we then partner with attorneys that oftentimes probably 75-80% of our cases now involve us hiring and supervising the attorneys for our clients to execute against the assets that we've located and have the attorneys assist us with additional discovery uh, through the issuance of subpoenas and other legal instruments. And we'll go through that process over the next hour and a half.